For anyone who's taught a learner driver, you'll know what it's like. I decided to make it a little easy for the instructor by building a brake feedback system. Hang around and I'll show you what it is and how I did it. Ah, a day in the life of a driving instructor. You're going to turn the engine on. You're going to turn the engine off. Let's turn left here. Okay, the other left. Stop, 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 stop. Go, go, go. Uh, okay, you're about to crash. You're about to crash. Speed up. Might be a good idea to stop. Stop, stop. Go, go, go. Slow down. Okay, turn right here. Okay, the other right. Are you going to brake? Might be a good idea to put the accelerator down. Okay, you can go now. Did you know the middle pedal's the brake pedal? Okay, stop. Slow down. Brake, brake, brake. It's a red line. Do you want to turn the engine off? So the problem's this. Often the learner driver doesn't really know how much to press on the brake pedal. This quick hack provides a fake brake pedal for the instructor. The more the pedal is pressed, the higher the pitch, so the learner driver can get instant feedback on how much they should be braking. Warning, this device is not intended to replace or circumvent any safety devices. Even though it works for me, it is not something you should rely on. I made this device at my own risk. If you intend to make one yourself, then you also do so at your own risk. To start off with, pick up some cheap digital bathroom scales. I bought this for $9 Australian and it had a nice solid glass plate that I'll use for mounting. The glass is toughened and is designed to shatter into small pieces, so it won't be dangerous. If you're worried, you can always use a plastic one in the car. You'll also need an Arduino, an audio amplifier and a weighing sensor module. I'll post all parts in the description below and on my website. The only bit of the scale we're interested in is the load sensors. There are usually four of them. This is by far the cheapest way of getting your hands on load sensors, as they each can handle up to 40 kilos. First remove the rubber feet off one of the sensors and unscrew the plastic feet. This is so you can check what sort of sensor you actually have. In my case, it was a three wire load sensor. Next, we want to take off the plastic housing holding the electronics. I checked to make sure I wouldn't cut any wires while dremeling off the plastic. I ran along the plastic with the dremel to remove one side. Make sure you haven't cut any wires by mistake. Do the same thing to the other side. I found that if you pull the plastic while cutting, it'll come off easier. This is where cheap things are good. The housing was only held on with double-sided sticky tape. Typical cheap circuit board manufacturing. Next, unscrew the circuit board. Cut all the wires off the circuit board and then toss it. You won't be needing it anymore. It's always good to try things out on a breadboard first, especially for something that has complex wiring like a Wheatstone bridge. We'll get onto Wheatstone bridges later. For now, I just soldered up header pins on all the breakout boards using the breadboard to hold them in place and then arranged all the components so that I could wire up. I tend to always start with power and ground pins, as it's the most important part, and if you forget, you're more likely to fry something. Once power and ground was connected, I wired up the load sensor breakout. Now, Wheatstone bridges. A Wheatstone bridge is a way of measuring the resistance of something using a balanced circuit. You'll find them in all digital bathroom scales, and anything else that measures stress. You can find out more detailed info in my technology videos. However, all we need to know for this project is how to wire up these load sensors. You can do this by measuring the resistance across all three wires. The two wires with the highest resistance will be the two outer poles, and the third will be the middle pole. So the final circuit should look like this. I connected this up onto the breadboard for testing. Now that all the basics are connected up, plug in your Arduino. Since I'm using an Arduino Mini Pro, I have an FTDI connector. Now that I had everything wired up, I wrote a simple sketch to calibrate the scales. I needed to be able to calibrate the zero point and also figure out what value was being returned from the load sensor and translate that to a kilogram weight. I eventually settled on a magic number and was able to weigh with reasonable accuracy some test weights. The next step was to add some buttons as I'll need to be able to easily calibrate it when it's in the car. I attached one end to a spare input and the other end to ground using internal pull-ups. This will be used to select zero or maximum calibration points. Then added a button to select the calibration mode which was connected to another spare input. When the toggle switch is set in one position and I press the calibration button it will set the zero point and when I move the toggle switch to the other position and press the calibration button again, it will set the maximum point. Simple. The next thing to do is add in sound. I soldered up speaker wires to the output of the PAM8302 breakout and connected up the input to a free analog output on the Arduino. And now we have some annoying sounds. I tried to choose sounds that wouldn't be too distracting for the driver. 
Now it's time to start removing it all off the breadboard onto something more permanent. Starting with a whetstone bridge, I pulled out each part of the bridge and soldered up. Then made some labels for the connections to the load sensor breakout board and stuck them to each of the wires as I pulled them out. Make sure it's correct, otherwise you'll have problems later. Next I found a nice sized box and some vero board to solder up all the components. I then figured out the best position to place the breakout boards to minimise the amount of soldering. Marked out where I needed to cut the tracks and cut them with a Dremel. I then started soldering up wires on the vero board. Every time I did this, I'd remove the wires on the breadboard to make sure I had everything covered. Then soldered up the Arduino and load sensor breakouts. Soldering up the amplifier breakout. There's many ways of constructing electronic circuits. I'm the impatient type and want to be able to have something up and running as quickly as possible, but I also want it to be reliable, so I often have to make trade offs. Now that I had everything soldered up, it's time to fit it into its case. Dremel off the VeroBot to size and fit it in as best I could. Next, I marked out the position of the speaker, printed out some graph paper and cut it out roughly, and used it as a template for marking out the speaker holes. And it should look like this. And then onto the drill press for a couple of minutes. You might need to tidy up the holes from the other side. While I'm in the shed, I might as well drill holes for the switches. I measured the size of the hole, marked it out and drilled it out. Back from the shed, I screwed up the switch and the button. Next thing is power. I used a female USB adapter which didn't quite fit into the square hole in the case and so required a bit of Dremel influence for it to fit. I next figured out which was the 5 volt and ground pins and soldered up some more wires with a header so that it could power the Arduino. But first I needed to just double check my wiring so I attached one end to the computer and the other end to the USB socket and verified the correct voltage. You can find out easily enough what the USB pins are by doing a quick Google. Next I needed to make a sturdy enough brake plate. I marked out the size of the scales onto some thick MDF and cut it to size on my saw table. Then I marked out the position of the feet on the scales so that scales would lock into position on the brake plate. I used a stopper guide on my router to make sure that it would be reasonably tidy. I wasn't too concerned with tidiness. It is after all just a structural component that was going to be hidden anyway, as long as it was deep enough to lock the feet in place, but not too deep to stop the scales from moving. I then roughly located the case on the brake plate and then back into the shed to drill out the holes for the wires. Doesn't have to be too accurate. Next I needed to build up the brake pedal. I found some old cedar offcuts which were nice and chunky and marked it out in the middle of the plate. My drill bit wasn't long enough, so I turned it over and drilled out from the other side, turned it back over and drilled out the holes further, then screwed in the very long screws. It's going to have to cope with a lot of abuse, so it needs to have some decent screws. Next I located another chunky bit of cedar offcut, drilled out another four screw holes and screwed them in tight. Now it's back inside to fix up the scale wiring. I wound electrical tape around the connections to avoid short circuits and secured the wires down, then poked the wires through the brake plate and the electronics case and finally securing the case with hot glue. Next I lathered a lot of liquid nails to the feet of the scales and secured the brake plate down on top. Next I soldered the scale wires directly to the vera board, secured the PCB down with hot glue, tidied up the wiring a bit and connected up the USB power. Oh, don't forget to hot glue the USB connector. And finally put in the speaker. Before I secured everything in place, I just wanted to make sure it still all worked. Yep, seems to be okay. So the operation is fairly simple. Plug it in and it should beep once to indicate it's starting to calibrate the zero point and again when it's finished. You can also flick the toggle switch down to calibrate the zero point. To set the maximum point, apply weight, flick the toggle switch up and press the button. It'll indicate the start and end of calibration. It'll of course start to beep at the highest point. If you take pressure off the brake pedal, it'll beep accordingly. There's actually three different tones generated. I figured that should be enough. Now just put the top of the case on and we're all set. So how well does it work? Let's take a look. So there you have it. If you do end up building one yourself, I'd love to hear about it and any improvements you might have made. If you like my channel, then please support me by subscribing. I publish a video every week on maker product reviews, technology explanations, and tutorials like this. So, see you next week.